Hi everyone, Wan Leong here. Okay, we're going to be learning physics SPM revision. This is paper 3 section A, question number 2 style. Uh, if you have a paper 3 question with you, section A, question 2, I hope that you can pick it up right now uh, because it will be better if you learn, then pause my video and then try to do the question at the same time. Okay, so and uh, feel free to pause the video whenever you want uh, so that you can actually study and also to practice together with me. Alright, so the format for SPM Physics Paper 3, alright, Paper 3 has two sections, Section A and Section B. Uh, section A has two questions, if you see over here, question number 1 has 16 marks, question number 2 has 12 marks, this is the one that we're going to focus in this video. Section B has question 3 and question 4, normally in SPM, question 3 will be from form 4, question 4 is actually a form 5 question. Both of these questions is 12 marks, but luckily you only have to pick one of it. So you are advised to use 60 minutes in section A and 30 minutes for section B. So yeah, paper 3 is one and a half hours. Students need to answer question 1 and question 2 in section A. Section B, pick one of it. And from 16 plus 12 plus 12, you will get 40 marks in paper 3. So alright, today is section A question 2. So I hope you are ready and we're going to start now. Set question 2, normally a graph is given to you, alright, graph with the readings with values on it and the line of the graph is already given. So you must state the relationship of y-axis and x-axis just by observing the graph. You have to determine a value from the graph. You have to calculate the gradient and you have to use the value of the gradient that you calculated. And lastly, you have to state a precaution. So let's start. Um, this is the SPM question. I don't remember which year already. You can actually open up your past year questions to find for this. So uh, even though you are a Form 4 student looking at this video, it doesn't matter. All right. Even though you do not know what are the physical terms that uh, I'm talking about, but the method on answering a paper tree is the same. So Form 4 students, I hope you can try this out. All right. A student carries out an experiment to investigate the relationship between the separation A of two coherent sources and the distance X between two consecutive anti-nodes of the interference pattern of the water wave in a ripple tank. Okay, this particular sentence tells us that this is the aim of the experiment. The result of this experiment are shown in graph of A against 1 over X in diagram 2.1. So, this graph is given to you in the question. All right. A is the y-axis, 1 over x is the x-axis, and if you notice, the units are given to you. The graph line is also given to you. So this is question for part A. Based on the graph in diagram 2.1, Roman number 1, state the relationship between A and 1 over x, 1 mark. Number two, determine the value of x when a equals to 12 cm. Show on the graph how you determine the value of x. This is a 3 marks question. Number three, calculate the gradient m of the graph. Show on the graph how you calculate m. 3 marks also. So let's start with the first question. State the relationship between a and 1 over x, 1 mark. So this is the graph given to us, a against 1 over x. You would see that this is a, what type of graph would this be if you remember and recall from your maths? It's a straight line passing through origin. So in maths, this is called a linear graph. The gradient is positive or negative? It's positive, isn't it? So types of graph that normally comes up in paper 3. First, if it's y, uh, it's a straight line graph, positive gradient passes through the origin, we call this graph y is directly proportionate to x. If it's a straight line graph, positive gradient, but it doesn't start from zero, we call this line to be y increases linearly with x. Next, if it's a linear graph but with a negative gradient, that means the line is going downwards, we call this graph as y decreases linearly with x. Last type of graph is when we see a curve like this. 
This is y is inversely proportionate to x. So normally we will look the question for paper 3 will have this four different types of relationship. Please use the keyword that is being underlined for to answer the relationship in paper 3. Alright, paper 3 we will not accept as y increases, x increases. Because there is graph given to you. If the graph is given to you, you have to use this relationship. Y is directly proportional to x, or increases linearly, or decreases linearly, or inversely proportional. So remember this when you answer paper 3 style question. So back to our question. State the relationship. It's a straight line graph. Positive gradient passes through 0. So which relationship will this be? Right, by observing, it's actually A directly proportionate to 1 over X. You can use the symbol or you can write in sentence A is directly proportionate to 1 over X. Okay, The question is saying A and 1 over X. So you don't have to write A is the distance between two coherent sources. No need. You just have to straight away use A is directly proportionate to 1 over X. So like this, you will get one mark. Question number two. B, determine the value of x when a is 12 cm. Show on the graph how you determine the value of x, 3 marks. So, because it's written here, show on the graph, which means that on your graph, you have to show, you have to draw the lines. Try to use a pencil, do not use a pen, okay? And try to darken your line. So, 12 a is 12 cm is at this point, so you have to draw a horizontal line passing through A equals to 12 cm and then drop a vertical line. When you reach this graph, drop a vertical line all the way downwards to 1 over x axis. So this is the reading of 1 over x when A is 12 cm. Please note that for this question, the question asks for the value of x. But on the graph is 1 over x, which means we have to inverse the reading. All right? Do not give the answer as 0.5 cm. It will be wrong. So your answer should be when a is 12 cm, 1 over x is 0.5. This is from the graph. Therefore, x is 2.0 cm. You do not need to change from centimeter to meter. Just leave the answer in cm. So this is a three marks question. All right, first mark, yes, it's supposed to be on the graph. Second mark is for your value of 0 0.5. And the third mark is for your final answer with the unit. Okay, next, calculate the gradient m of the graph. Show on the graph how you calculate the gradient m, 3 marks. As you know, similarly to the previous one, 3 marks question and they give you the word show on the graph, which means you have to show. So how do we show? The triangle used for the calculation must be drawn on the graph at least with a size of 8 times 10 cm. Graph paper normally from 0 0.1 to 0, uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, this is 2 cm. Okay, so if it's an 8 times 10, which means from 0 0.1 until, let's say, minimum here. Okay, 0 0.1 to 0 0.3, 4 boxes, multiply by 5 boxes. But if you want a more accurate reading with the answer scheme, draw a bigger triangle. So students always ask me, which point should I take to find the gradient? So it is the best if you can actually find a point, like for example over here. The graph line intersect nicely with the y-axis and the x-axis. It's nicely at that point, so you just pick that point. Find another point down here that coincide nicely, alright, maybe this point, okay? So, if the curve, if the graph is curving, find the tangent of the given point, okay? Use your maths to actually find the gradient. It's the same. So, I use this point and the top point. 
So first, gradient M formula similarly to mathematics is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Alright, my y2 is 12.0 cm minus y1 1.0 cm over 0.5 cm negative 1 minus 0.04 cm negative 1. So calculating this, putting this value into your calculator, you'll get 23.9 all right, unit will be in centimeter square. Why? Because y axis is in cm, x axis is cm negative 1. So finally, you will get centimeter square. Three marks distributed 1, number 1, on your graph, the gradient, number 2, the formula and the substitution value, you have to show this value out, and number 3, your final answer with your unit. If the unit is wrong, this marks is not given. Or if you didn't write your unit, there's no marks for the answer as well. Warning! Please draw a sufficiently large triangle like I said just now if you want to have a more accurate reading. You have to correct substitute into the value from the graph. And please remember to press your calculator correctly. Okay. State the value within the acceptable range and correct unit. Acceptable range means 3 scientific notation and 2 decimal points. 3 decimal points I can accept but the best would be 2 decimal points. We will reject the answer in fraction. Normally in physics, we do not accept the answer in fraction except for certain cases only. But for graph, we never accept the answer in fraction. Alright, B, the wavelength lambda of the water wave is given by the formula lambda equals to m over L, where m is the gradient of the graph and L is the distance from the wave source to the plane where x is measured. In this experiment, L is 20 cm. Okay, some of you previously, the seniors, when they see this question, they will get blur on what to do. Actually, it's very easy. All right, from false also, you can ident identify this. Just take this formula out, lambda equals to m over l. m is the gradient. We've calculated the gra gradient for the previous question. And l is already given in here. They ask us to calculate the value of lambda, two marks. So all you have to do is take the formula, Alright, take the formula, lambda equals to m over l. m is actually the value that we've got from the previous question. l is given to you, 20 cm. So substitute that value, 23.9 cm square over 20 cm. You correctly substitute this, you will get one mark. Putting the values into your calculator and you get 1.195 cm or 1.2 cm. Remember to write your unit, you will get the second mark. Okay, simple as that. C. The relationship between the velocity v of the water waves and their wavelength lambda is given by v equals to f lambda, where f is the frequency. In this experiment, f is 12.0 hertz. Using the answer in b, calculate the velocity of the water wave, 2 marks. Same as just now. All you have to do is all right, write out the formula that is given to you in the question. Frequency of 12 is 12 hertz. Lambda from the previous question is 1.2. Therefore, speed is 14.4 cm per second. You do not need to change this to meter per second. All right, the question is already given to you in centimeter, so you can just straight away use centimeter per second. So one mark for substitution, another mark for the answer and unit. Last question for section uh, question number two is, state one precaution that should be taken to improve the accuracy of the results in this experiment, one mark. So to increase accuracy, there's two answers that you can use and you can actually memorize this two answer for your precaution. It can be used for every single experiment in paper tree. Alright, the first one is repeat experiment a few times and take average reading to increase the accuracy. Or you can memorize this. 
I must be placed perpendicular to the scale or reading to avoid parallax error. Either one of this is acceptable. But please be aware if you were to use the second answer, all right, the I must be perpendicular to the scale or reading to avoid parallax error. Please remember one thing. Do not answer parallax error full stop only. Instead of perpendicular, do not use the word parallel or you spell the parallax wrongly. All right, using any of this three will get you zero. Okay, just use, normally I would tell my students to use the first answer. Repeat experiment a few times and take the average reading to increase accuracy. All right, so that's the end of paper three, section A, question number two. So I hope you can try and practice more. Okay. And uh, if you have any questions, you can actually comment or you can let me know if you're my school students. So that's all for today. Thank you. Bye.